This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Canine crew, it's time to just sell the damn thing. Doberman Dan is revealing his contrarian formula for getting a rush of new customers, building your business faster, and making the highest possible profits. Go to JustSellTheDamnThing.com to get your copy today. Prepare yourself for the uncensored, nothing held back, no BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. Recording going and we can flow with it. Oh. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me do my class. You got to keep that in, audio engineer. Yeah, you got to keep that. <laughs> that hearty belch prompted by <laughs> Pellegrino. That is, we got to keep that in because that fart noises belching in any references to bodily appendages or bodily functions those are the keys to a successful podcast. I mean, you're the podcast expert. Am I right or am I right? You got to know your audience, and I think you know yours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, now that you say that, then uh, <laughs> note to audio engineer, cut out Everything. the loud belch <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> you know, it has been said that Edison made a thousand unsuccessful attempts at inventing the light bulb. I whether or not that's true, I do not know. <laughs> Makes for a great story, though, when people are using that to illustrate, you know, the power of persistence. But allegedly, a reporter asked, how did it feel to fail a thousand times? And allegedly, again, Edison replied, I didn't fail 1000 times. The light bulb was an invention with 1000 steps or or something like that. So is it true? No idea. I sure hope it's true because it's a great story. Showing the, you know, the power of having a positive mindset, and never giving up. But it doesn't reveal one of the most important secrets to Edison's success and really any super successful person's success. And it's something all of us can easily do. I, I've shared, I've had people ask about like my daily habits before. I've shared them in the Doberman Dan letter. I, I don't recall. I might have written blog posts about them. You know, I figured them out. I figured them out stumbling around in the dark, but I figured them out because they not only help keep me happy and a bit more sane than I normally would be there. By the way, I didn't say I was sane. I said they keep me more sane, but <laughs> a bit more. Yeah, they're also the, <laughs> it's it's really the biggest secret or the, the, I should say they they're the biggest secrets to to my productivity and success. And and I just, you know, I probably should have plan this out better with more open loops and more teasing, but I'm just going to whip it out right Whoa. now. I mean, you know, not that I'm going to whip out my, put that thing away <laughs> and tell you, <laughs> and tell you my most, my most important habits. So like for me, okay. So I'm a writer. I've said it before. Writing sucks. Being a writer sucks, <laughs> but, but having written something rocks. So, you know, I don't know how to get the benefits of having written something yet without actually writing it myself. So, you know, that's my thing. So one of my morning habits is 33 minutes and 33 seconds writing. And and then like right after that, after about a five, 10 minute break, it's 33 minutes and 33 seconds practicing the guitar. So a lot of people ask why 33 minutes and 33 seconds? Well, yeah, I just pulled that out of my ass. I don't know why. No. It's because Gene Schwartz, a super successful copywriter who also was a student of the mind and how the brain works, said he doesn't believe it's possible to intensely focus on any one thing for more than about 30 minutes. So he always set an egg timer for 33 minutes and 33 seconds. And I thought, oh, that makes sense. Good enough for him. Good enough for me. So so that's like, I mean, as simple as that is, those are two really big secrets. I guess that's only one secret. It's one secret applied to two different things, right? My writing yeah. and my my music that keep me happy, keep me less insane than I really am and have allowed me to stack up what some would consider a probably a pretty decent chunk of change. But here's the thing, it, as as well as I as, as much as I know how well those things work and as much as I know that that is essential 
to keeping this Doberman Dan train on track. It amazes me. It just utterly blows my mind how pretty much every damn day, a plethora of various problems, situations, (laughs) people (laughs) seem to conspire against me to keep me from doing those morning habits. Even people who recognize the fruits of those habits (laughs) and financially (laughs) directly benefit from those habits almost daily. I didn't mention any names now, did I, Jonathan? No kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Almost daily conspire against me to keep me from doing those morning habits. You know what I do? I just put the blinders on and do them anyway. Like just this week, for example. After my 33-minute, 33-second writing session, there was an allegedly urgent fire, finger quotes, that only I, Sir Dan of Doberman, could put out, allegedly. I could, you know, so I considered dealing with it. I'm a human. I can't say I've got like, you know, zen-like focus, man. I'm human. When a (laughs) fire pops up, I got, I'm going to look at it. I can't help it, you know? So for a few seconds, I considered dealing with it and And just, you know, it's like, ah, my guitar practice, it can wait. You know, it's not like that's, the world isn't going to end. Problem is, at least for me, when I do that later, never comes. And it never gets done, you know, and that sets a precedence I'm not that thrilled about, you know, because I may, you may just be talking about it happening one day. One day can turn into seven years, you know, I mean, that's what happened with my first solo CD. So here's, here was my reaction to the fire. You know, I was the only person in the universe who could deal with this. I ignored it. I picked up my guitar. I got in my 33 minutes and 33 seconds of practice. Now, don't ex- listen, don't expect this to happen every day. But this this is what happened to me in that instance. Amazingly, I made a huge breakthrough and and I smashed through a rut that's been keeping me from progressing for like, I was going to say several months now. Now that I think about it, <laughs> probably close to a couple years. And it was and, and, and I immediately thought, wow, it was almost like some kind of little anti-success gremlins. They just knew <laughs> I was close to, I was right around the corner from this major breakthrough. And those little bastards came out of the woodwork to do every evil shenanigan they could think of to keep me from getting in my thirty-three, thirty-three on the guitar. So how did I defeat those evil little buggers? I ignored them. And, and simply by ignoring them, And continuing these brain dead, simple daily habits day after day, consistently, persistently, those ugly little gremlins went running for the hills. And the 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 quote unquote fire that seemed so urgent, what happened with that? Turns out it wasn't so urgent after all. When I ignored it, guess what? It took care of itself. So here's the thing: a worthwhile dream or goal is not accomplished with infrequent sprints. Progress is made, goals are accomplished. By daily consistency and persistency. It's the little actions repeated day after day, month after month, year after year. That is the secret. That, as far as I know, is only one of two things you can control, your actions and your thoughts. So those controlling those actions is just doing those actions day after day, month after month, year after year. You know, it punching the clock, like we talked about last week that I learned from Charles Staley, the strength coach. And it ain't that hard, man. You just... Put the blinders on and you do it. And well, I said, it's not that hard. In the beginning, it is kind of hard, okay? There's this 21 day thing. You might've heard it before. It's worked out to be true in my case. Could be between 21 and 40 days, but whatever. The principle's still the same. You do it, just put the damn blinders on and do it consistently daily for whatever, twenty, whatever it's gonna take between 21 and 40 days. You'll discover something pretty cool. It actually gets easier. So, so after that initial resistance period that you got to break through, whatever it is, you know, if it's more than 21 days, don't have a freaking cow, dude. Here's what happens. A habit is established and it really does take less self, self-discipline to keep doing the habit than to start the habit. So all you got to do is just suck it up and grow a pair <laughs> for a handful of weeks and just do it daily. It won't always, always be smooth sailing, but it will be easier. I, I promise you, it will be easier. It, what, what has been your experience with that? that uh, it's interesting. And man, I call it the law of reps. 
like you have to get your reps in and when you get the reps in in the beginning it's gonna hurt it's gonna burn you're gonna have a buildup of lactic acid and you're gonna hate life and then you just keep on doing it and it keeps getting better and then when when you finally look back that's where you start making the progress is when it's become a habit it's ingrained in you and you're doing it almost automatically so Dude, my first breakthrough was through, I think, similar to yours, was, was the bodybuilding kind of stuff. And then you take that and bring it into business and get your reps in and go through the shit and come out the other end with whatever it is that you you wanted. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, it's showing up, punching the clock, putting in the work, just doing the reps. You just get your ass to the gym and you do the reps. And uh, so... I had another very recent breakthrough with a with a secret I learned from uh, George Witte, my music producer. This guy's worked with man all the legends, the Brecker Brothers, Carlos Santana, uh, Celine Dion, Herbie Hancock, and actually this secret he shared with me, he learned it from Herbie Hancock. He's Herbie Hancock's producer. He does arranging for him, and he and he puts together like Herbie's keyboard rigs when he goes on tour. The keyboard rigs now are in like Logic, you know, Apple Logic. They're on the computer instead of the big stacks of keyboard that they had back in the day. But and it's a it's a Zen thing. And so, so here's the story behind it. George was telling me that there's a survey of people who I might get the exact number of years wrong, but of people who've been married for I think 30 years or longer. And what psychologists discovered, their biggest secret to longevity in marriage is, <laughs> and this will sound funny, but eventually it'll make sense. The, the, the secret to the longevity marriage thing is low expectations. <laughs> you won't ever get let down. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got low expectations. You aren't let down, you know, you're not expecting this person to fill every single need you have. Yes. You know, that's so good. And so, so I guess George was telling Herbie that Herbie Hancock, God, I sound like I'm, I sound like a name dropping douche, don't I? Yeah, my <laughs> producer, a living legend, hangs out with Herbie Hancock. God, it sounded douchey, but whatever. So the, the story is told to me by George was that George relayed that low expectations thing in marriage to Herbie Hancock and Herbie took it to a Zen level. So Herbie's a Buddhist and, and practices all this Zen stuff. And if that is the key to being a kick-ass musician like him, then sign me up, brother. But um, Herbie said, yeah, well, I got something. There, there's, there's a way to, to make it much better, and that's to have no expectations. Mm. And, and his point was, that, I mean, they were relating that low expectations thing in marriage. They were relating that how they could apply that to, to music. Because when you're an A-list musician like that at their level— you know, you're you never satisfied. You're always frustrated because you've gotten so far. Now, you know, all that you don't know, and you're going to die before you ever know a teeny tiny fraction of it. So, wow. so a lot of those guys are freaking neurotic. I'm not saying Herbie Hancock is George says he's really super balanced and, and George has got his shit together. Me, I'm neurotic. Okay. <laughs> uh, about that stuff. And stress about it to the point of experiencing physical symptoms, you know, stressing about like, oh my God, I suck as an improviser. So Herbie put it into perspective. I was bitching to George about it sucks, you know, showing up for this 33 minutes and 33 seconds practice session. I don't get in enough practice because there's so much I need to know and so much I don't know. And I don't seem to be making progress and blah, blah, blah. I start sweating when I'm practicing and it's uncomfortable. And then that leads to me not wanting to do it, which leads to me not doing it. And one day can turn into seven freaking years. And George said, well, you know, Herbie found the solution to that. It's show up with no expectations. That has been so liberating for me. Now, it's I mean, it's pretty damn hard to do that <laughs> in yeah. actual practice. You know, but in theory, it makes sense. And it's just exactly what we're talking about, right? You just show up and do the work. No expectations. The work itself is, is if, if you can, you know, arrange it this way in your mind, the work itself is the reward. And just know that by putting in the work, even though it may not be visible to you, there is progress being made. And it usually won't be gradual. It'll be like what happened with my guitar when you know who was trying to intrude upon that practice time. <laughs> 
<laughs> so year and a half, no progress. All of a sudden that one day during my 3333, huge breakthrough. Man, I love it. All right. So I'm not even going to ask you what's coming up next time. Let's save that for a surprise. That is a wrap. That's good. I'm glad you're not asking because I have no idea. <laughs> uh, another off the chain show is off the air. We'll be back next time. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Canine Crew got a special treat for you. What we are affectionately referring to as the off the chain hotline. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Ask questions. We don't care. Just call 321 424 6043 and give us a piece of your mind. This is the podcastfactory.com.